This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Today is Rupert Verko, the CEO of Cobra Resources. Thank you very much for joining us today, Rupert. For the first time that we're speaking on Stockbox, how are you doing? Very well, thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. I wonder if you can perhaps just start us off just giving us a bit of a high-level overview of the company, the elevator pitch, if you like. Sure. So Cobra Resources, we're listed on the main market of the London Stock Exchange. Our primary focus is the Woodner Project. Uh, we initially started an earning at the Woodner Project focused on uh, growing defined gold resources there. Uh, and we've made a divergence to, owing to the opportunity uh, into rare earths. Uh, our focus in rare earths has been on economic enablers where we see an opportunity to grow uh, complementary gold and rare earth resources that enables us to um, exploit value from overburden and produce or mine rare earths at a really low cost. But during this process, we've uh, defined a significant opportunity in ionic rare earths that occur in paleo channels. The benefit of ionic rare earths is they're very cost effective to leach. Uh, they can be done at relatively benign acidities, like uh, the equivalent of orange juice. And this is a hugely scalable opportunity. We see this as being something that we can grow a, a multi-generational resource on uh, to provide critical minerals that are necessary for decarbonisation. Okay, so originally the Woodner project was was gold, and there is a Jork resource there. You've got some nice high grams per ton grades coming through, and some of the recent expiration. So, was the rare earth uh, a, a surprise discovery here on this deposit? And clearly, you see that as more of a, a value uh, place to go and explore in the future. Well, look, as uh, the Western world has has looked to secure its supply uh, or diversity of supply of critical minerals. There's been a lot of drive on um, critical minerals like rare earths, and mm -hmm. that's made a lot of companies look at this opportunity. Uh, I think what's important is that we associated or identified enrichment in rare earths that's attributed to the alteration that we see with the gold. And we have then progressed the model uh, for easily recoverable rare earths from that point. And what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to define something that we believe can enable us to be the lowest cost producer with very high environmental credentials of rare earth minerals that are necessary for, for magnets required mm -hmm. for electric vehicles and wind turbines and the like. Okay. So with regards to the gold, before we talk about the rare earth in more detail, are you looking to continue to perhaps prove up more resources here and extract gold as well, or is the focus really going to be on rare earths? No, absolutely. There's value in the gold. The gold is mm. very shallow in occurrence, uh, amenable to open cut mining. Uh, we are looking at what options we can uh, best okay. achieve a commercial outcome on the gold and bring it forward into production. Okay, okay. So you're looking at those options at the moment, and uh, you can announce that to market once uh, once you've gone had time to go through all those options. So let's think about the rare earths. And you mentioned about the ionic rare earths. What's so special about ionic? I know there's different rare earth deposits. They are fairly complex. I think they're not uncommon. They are very common, but it can be quite complex to actually extract value from. So can you just talk us through the ionic rare earths that you have and also this sort of leaching that you talked about? I noticed in situ recovery was mentioned on, on, the, uh, on the website there about the rare earths. Sure. So when we talk about ionic mineralization, uh, that refers to the nature of how rare earths combine to clays. And what's mm. important about ionic mineralization over clay hosted or hard rock phases of rare earths is there are no uh, radioactive byproducts 
that are produced during the leaching process, but also the ease of extraction uh, is very simplistic in nature. The metallurgy lends itself to cost efficiency. And uh, what is important around that is whilst it's cost effective, there are less risks associated with environmental degradation. Um, our geology is simplistic in that it occurs in an ancient river system and we can use the geological properties of that river system to potentially extract those rare earths via in situ recoveries. And what that means is we don't need to mine with truck and shovel and we don't need to stockpile, we don't need to crush, we don't need to screen, we don't have tailings dams, we don't have a big footprint that's using a lot of energy and carbon consumption to output our materials, which means it's more cost effective and uh, less labour and energy intensive. Okay. So in situ recovery, as I understand, is effectively pumping a solution down into the ground and then recovering that solution and at the same time recovering the mineral that you're actually after. I've heard of it before in copper, the copper in situ recovery, but it's a fairly, it, it's not widely used, is it? I mean, how well sort of proven is this technology? Would you have to run a certain amount of tests to see how feasible it is? So uh, for context, South Australia is a ISR leader. We have a number of very successfully operating uranium mines that have been operating in similar geological terrains as what we've discovered these rare earths in. Okay. Um, I think what's important to note is uh, China made a move to in situ recovery um, for their ionic mines uh, a long time ago in an effort to improve their environmental um, impact through their mining operations. And what we have is we have um, the right conditions that can increase our potential productivity by using very permeable sands to access the contacts to our mineralised clays. So whilst the geology might be complex in nature the actual recovery process is relatively simple okay and would you i mean what stage are you at now with the, with the project then in terms of exploring on it sure mark so we first drilled this for proof of concept uh, at the bolan prospect in april we confirmed mm -hmm. mineralization in june okay and we've now confirmed metallurgical recoveries uh, this month. So what we're planning to do from this point forward is to get better data around the nature of mineralisation and how that may be extracted and then starting our baseline environmental requirements to support um, a potential um, pilot study as such for okay. that ISR extraction and uh, in parallel with that, we'll be looking to demonstrate scale. We believe that we can um, drill this uh, discovery owing to the significant scale of these paleo systems. We now, with two additional tenement applications, have over 2,000 square kilometres of perspective paleo system, and we believe that we can demonstrate something that is absolutely significant in this style of mineralization okay and in terms of the geological terrain that you, you mentioned earlier there what are we talking about in terms of how it sort of it looks you've mentioned sands um i guess we're not talking here hard rock but we're also not talking clay so what are we talking about if we were to imagine what it's like on the ground and where the the rare earth elements are sitting within the the, the, the terrain Okay, so sure, what, what you need is you need primary enrichment of rare earth, so that's where they've occurred in hard rocks. Mm -hmm. And then you need those, you need the environment to effectively leach the rare earths out of their mineral phases, uh, and that requires acid and sulfides to do that over time. And then you need the mobility into that rare into that paleo system. And you need the right conditions for them to bind to clay bands that sit within those permeable sands. Okay. So what we have is a number of clay bands that occur within within riverbed channel sands, as you as you could imagine, um, that have been deposited okay. over 
the period of, a, of an ancient river system and those sands interbedded within those, uh, those clays interbedded within the sands uh, host uh, uh, rare earths. Okay. So really the, the, the ancient river, as you, you mentioned earlier, has leached the rare earths from where, the, where they were originally deposited or formed in hard rock into clay bands or sands in an ancient river bed. So you're effectively working in an ancient river bed consisting of clays and soft materials like sand. In a matter of speaking, yes, that's correct. Okay. And then you mentioned there on what you're doing. So you want to better understand how you can extract. You've got to work on some environmental studies to get a pilot plant going and demonstrate scale. So what are we talking about in terms of timelines here for various aspects or milestones you want to achieve going down this process? I mean, from what you've said there, it sounds, and I could be wrong, but it sounds like you would probably want to get a pilot going fairly soon. We think it's important, Mark, to be able to demonstrate, one, what the scale potential is, but then what your productivity outcomes could potentially be for a future mine. So whilst uh, whilst it's important for us to grow a resource and grow that quickly and cost-effectively, uh, it's just as important for us to demonstrate proof of mining concept. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very fortunate that in South Australia, uh, we have a regulatory process that will enable us to, uh, with the right environmental um, outcomes from monitoring and testing, uh, be able to do this on an expiration license. So that okay. brings forward that ability of a pilot study um, and we'd like to think that we could do that within a relatively tight time frame. So that's what we're working to. Um, okay. What that will also enable us to do is to produce a carbonate um, product to try and secure commercial outcomes for a potential future offtake requirement that will help us then um, drive the market demand for the product that we, we can pr produce. Okay, so under your exploration license, you're looking then really to continue to grow the resource with exploration, but also doing a proof of concept study. Absolutely. So recently, we um, signed an MOU with a group based out of Manchester University called Water Cycle Technologies, mm -hmm. and they have developed some very uh, innovative um, membrane systems where they've success successfully extracted lithium from geothermal brines um, to produce lithium salts or carbonates. And we effectively believe that there is applicability in that process to be able to apply that to our bowl and discovery and um, effectively use a very cost-effective process to recover our rare earth. Okay, so you'd be working with WaterCycle under that MOU to, to, to complete this study. Do you have a time frame? I mean, what can investors perhaps expect in terms of news flow to come for the rest of the year? Sure. So we expect to have a partnership solidified with WaterCycle shortly that will outline specific milestones with that work. Uh, but we hope to be back in the field by the end of the year doing drilling both from that um, metallurgy and well field perspective, and additionally further resource air core drilling as well. Okay, okay. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Rupert Velko, the CEO of Cobra Resources. Well, thanks for having me. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.